Good morning. morning. Welcome to Grace. Any visitors that we have this morning. So as you can tell, Vacation Bible School kicks off tonight. And um, we're going to start with an ice cream social under the portico at 515. And registration starts at 530. Um, Please keep the volunteers and the kids in prayer this week for a good week. And the the leaders especially stay well rested. (laughs) it's a busy busy week so there's no Sunday school today at all we don't um, because of all the decorations and so the classes will start back on next Sunday July 24th this year at vacation Bible school we're collecting school school kit back to school items um, everyone is invited to bring donations to help create school kits and we are stocking the NALC disaster response warehouse So there will be baskets out there to put items in. Also, the list is in your bulletin, and there's also a list at the Welcome Center that you can take home. Um, Sign up at the Welcome Center if you can help us tear down all our decorations on Friday, July 22nd, starting at 9. And then my last announcement is Today's the last day to sign up for the Columbus Crew Faith and Family Night that we're going to be going to August 21st. You can sign up at the Welcome Center for that as well. That's all that I have. We'll continue now with confession and forgiveness. Please stand with me and turn toward the baptismal font. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Merciful Father, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the opening hymn.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest and peace to His people on earth. Lord God, Gracious God, in you we find our peace, comfort, and rest. In the midst of the harried pace and chattering noises of our world, you call us lovingly to find our life in your Son, Jesus. Teach us to still, listen, follow, through Jesus Christ our Lord. A reading from Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servants. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, there, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
reading from Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under the heaven. I, Paul, became a servant to this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came and said to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is needed of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. You know, during Jesus' ministry, we see a whole gallery of friendships all varying in depth and maturity. For instance, he built close friendship with Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. Later in Jesus' ministry, Lazarus, remember, became ill. And his sisters fully expected their rabbi and friend Jesus to intervene and to come and to heal him. Jesus did, but in a way they could have never imagined. In the end, it was by raising Lazarus from the dead. However, on this trip to Jerusalem, all is well with Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Jesus and the disciples have come to visit their friends in Bethany. What took place in the run-up to their meal nearly 2,000 years ago, ago, I think, could have happened in any one of our homes today, especially in the event of an unexpected crowd of like 13 people, you know, coming to the door uh, to visit. How would you handle that? I don't know about you, but 13's a lot. 
In the Old Testament lesson, Abraham has the fatted calf killed and prepared and throws a banquet for three guests, one of whom is the pre-incarnate Jesus. Such an offering of hospitality was a social norm, both in Abraham's day as well as in Jesus' day, Lazarus' day as well. So, is it any wonder that Martha, being the older sister, is stressed and perhaps just a little bit testy? I don't know about you, but I can, can you identify with Martha? I can. I mean, I think Mark, Martha is one of those people that has a pretty good, healthy justice bone. And she exhibits that. Now here's Martha, sweating in the kitchen, all by herself, and Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet, acting as if she is a disciple. Martha may have felt, if Mary didn't have enough sense to, show, uh, to know that she needed to be in the kitchen, helping Martha prepare food and offer hospitality to their guests then surely Jesus should have noticed what was going on and intervened in the situation. Doesn't he care, she might have thought? This reminds me of an episode that occurred on the Sea of Galilee when Jesus was asleep. Remember, he had, he had, um, he had taught, he had healed, who knows, maybe hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people, and he wanted to go to the other side of the lake and he was so tired, there was a cushion in the back of the little boat they were in, he fell fast asleep on that cushion. And as they're making their way across, a huge squall, a huge storm arose. It was such a great storm that it, water was piling into the boat. And Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat. And they began, he's sound asleep. And they began to wonder if Jesus really cared about whether they perished or not. As if to say, come on, you could at least help us bail the water out of the boat. And so they woke Jesus up. Said, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? In answer to their question, Jesus, now think about this. I've been on a, a boat or two. Have you been on a, on, a, on a craft? Can you imagine a roiling sea? You're going through a huge blow, waves bigger than your boat, and standing up in the boat? Jesus does. That tells you something. Jesus stood up in the boat, and with a word, he stilled that storm, and everything returned to calm. The disciples are utterly astounded and wonder, who is this that even the waves and the wind obey him? I'm just saying this as an aside. They just watched him cast out demons and heal people of all sorts of stuff. Did, did they think then, who is this guy? No, because he has, he has power over chaos that they said it. Who is this guy that even the wind and the waves obey him? In both cases, Jesus' disciples feels, feel if they are not being cared for by Jesus in the way that they would have expected. In the latter case, Jesus asked the disciples... Where's your faith? Which I take to mean, why did you wake me up? Why didn't you care, take care of this situation yourselves? That's what Jesus expected. He expected the disciples to do it. I think in all honesty, the disciples didn't believe nor have any idea that they could. Luke portrays Martha's plight in this way. But Martha, overly occupied and too busy, was distracted by much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me, to lend a hand and to do her part along with me. But the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha, you're anxious about many things. There is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the good portion that shall not be taken away from her. Mary took the, the uh, posture of a disciple sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to him. Martha was distracted by her task of hospitality, which in this case pulled her in a different direction, away from being present with Jesus. This revelation has caused me to ask, what's the mission statement of our congregation here at Grace Lutheran Church? Is our mission to make Martha's or is it to make Mary's? That is, 
Would a Martha-type personality be more at home here at Grace? Or would a person like Mary find kindred spirits here sitting at Jesus' feet? Martha saw her mission, her duty as service to her guests. Mary saw her mission as listening to Jesus as a, as a disciple listens to his or her master. Martha places herself under the law. Mary places herself under the gospel. When we function under the law, we are forever assessing the situation. We're forever asking questions about process. That is, who can do what? With what? When? And how? Process now is not without its uses. It lends toward order and stability, which is good. It also becomes deadly as the law apart from gospel can destroy both soul and spirit. Under the law, it is easy to sort people into categories and to pit one group against another, victim versus oppressor, gay versus straight, liberal versus conservative, black versus white. It, the list is endless. All intended to fracture society, to divide people from one another for the sake of power and control. That happens, by the way, in the church, doesn't it, all the time? We notice things. We see who shows up, who doesn't show up, who is good to their word, and who bails out on you, who's faithful, who is not so faithful. And we make judgments based on all those sorts of things. When we do that, we are under the law and not under the gospel. Now, given a choice between law and gospel, I think we would, choose law, we would choose law almost every time because deep down, we like being in control. Really, we do. And if power is to be had, well, if it's to be had, then better me than thee, right? I mean, if, if we're handing out power and control, just put me on the line. I'd like to be a part of that. I think each and every one of us has that strain within us. Jesus, in answer to Martha's burden she's carrying under the law, shares with her a truth. There is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Fifteen hundred years later, Martin Luther would say concerning this particular text, the word of God, the gospel, is the one thing. The mission, if we are to have a mission that is in communion with the Great Commission, is to go and make more Marys. A person who comes to see themselves as a, as a disciple of Jesus and so loves the pleasure of his company that she or he gladly hears his voice and follows him. Serving and loving others as we have been loved is an outflow then. It's not the thing. It's simply an outflow of what you do once you've loved and are following Jesus. You begin to have that love flow through you. And that love splashes on a lot of people with whom you live and move and have your being. Loving Jesus and spending time with Him comes before then anything else. Otherwise, no matter how well-intentioned our serving the other may be, it will be motivated by the law and not by the freedom of the gospel. The gospel is the revelation that Jesus died for my sins on the cross and rose from the grave so that I too might be resurrected and live with Father, Son, and Spirit forever. That's the gospel. Apart from this, even love, even love, becomes grounded in the law and avails then nothing. Amen.
the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the church, the world, and all people according to their need. I ask the Vacation Bible School volunteers to please stand. Oh, you are already standing, aren't you? Okay, come up front. <laughs> Let us pray. Gathering God, we pray for congregations who will offer a Vacation Bible School program this summer. Today we especially pray for the volunteers for our VBS program which starts tonight. Bless the teachers and volunteers with imagination, creativity, and joy in their working. Through their efforts, reveal your love and life-giving gospel to children in communities across our nation. For those who know it well and those who will hear it for the first time, may the gospel fall upon open hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for coming up. Almighty and merciful God, create in your church faithful stewards of the divine ministry, mystery which you have revealed in Jesus. Through his body on earth, draw all people to Christ that they might be reconciled to you and know the peace that comes only through faith in the redeeming work of the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Help the people of this congregation to rightly balance the loving hospitality of Martha with the loving listening of Mary. Let all we say and do to lead our neighbors to the one thing needful, the strong, saving love of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, just as you brought down the walls of Jericho, we pray that you would break down the barriers that prohibit us from reaching out in love to all God's children. Move us beyond economic, racial, and class distinctions in our service to those in need. Give us a true evangelical spirit to reach out in love to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Healing and sanctifying spirit, we pray for your work to be done in all who suffer from emotional or physical illness. Bless the healing hands that you have called and sent to care for your people. Grant your comfort and peace to all who need your healing touch. We pray especially for Rick Stewart, Rod Rice, Sue Lurkey, Will Stoll, Ray Bertelson, Jan Perry, Lorraine Ryder, Clarence Clapham, Janice Hardick, Joan Hassler, Sean Turnbull, and those we name silently in our hearts or out loud with our voices. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand with me. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life, and so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Christ was betrayed. We remember how he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup and after giving thanks he gave it for all of them to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks almighty God that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life and we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.